Good evening. One well, of the microphones are working tonight. I'd like to welcome everybody out, and all the regulars, and if you're visiting, we especially want to welcome you. Uh, in way of announcements, uh, Ladies Auxiliary is still on tomorrow and will only be canceled if, if school is canceled. So it's uh, still on for tomorrow and the food has been uh, taken care of. And also, we still have some furniture that's left uh, and under the carport, if anybody's interested in that. Uh, if not, I plan on starting to do something with it middle or end of this week. So go ahead and uh, get your name on it if, if, you're, if you're interested in it. So that's, that's enough business. So it's time, oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> So 
you Sunday is next Sunday. I've got somebody to do mine, but the rest of you, if you don't have somebody to do your job, see Scott uh, so we can get that lined up. He said this morning kids didn't like to wait till the last minute to know, so I believe he's probably telling the truth about that. At this time, we will go before the Lord in prayer. We do have much to be in prayer about. And I said it this morning. I feel like I say it every service. We also have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, but uh, at this time, is there any spoken prayer request? Remember this. this request. <clears throat> Any other spoken request? Just remember him. If there's no other spoken request or the unspoken shown but just uplifting your hands. Everybody that can and will is gather around the altar. I'll ask Kenneth, if he will, to lead us in prayer. Come on, Craig T. Get you a song. I was thinking there while we was a while we was, was a praying. Uh, Kevin's talking this morning about having access access to God, and we're just me, anyways, just common people. And I was listening. I 
wouldn't be nosy, but just listening to you and praying, boy, if it's as sweet to God, I can't, or as sweet as it was to me to hear you pray, I can't imagine what God's uh, is thinking when we bow before Him. And just common people, every one of us come from a humble beginning, or uh, and for some reason He's seen fit to allow us to come before the throne room and talk directly to the Creator, to the, the universe. That was why well, really blessed me. I'm thankful for that. Craig T's going to sing a song for us. Lord, help me stay 
if I live to be a hundred, I'll still hold to your hand until you come to take us home to that promised land. Lord, I want to be what you Maybe a testimony word for the Lord before we turn it over to Kevin. Right. We really need to hold on to what we have. It's nothing we're doing. It's what he's doing. And I want to be very careful. I always just want to pray and, and, and ask God's direction and his blessing on our church. Yes. Because we certainly are susceptible just like everybody else is. And I just praise his name for our church and our church family. Yes. Let's all just stick together and pray that God will continue to bless our church and that we'll be a lighthouse in the community. Yes. And that we'll continue to do what God will have us to do. Yes, we are. Words for the Lord, testimonies. All right, let's pray for Kevin as he comes. Years ago, uh, me and Scott Bradford went up to uh, Illinois to uh, to a funeral, and uh, as we were going, we saw a church uh, that was for sale, and uh, it's very unusual. That's the first church I'd ever seen with a sign that said "for sale," and that bothered me. Left me with a lot of questions, and going on up the road, we would talk about it. And every now and now again, I'd bring it back up, or he'd bring it back up, and say, "Reckon what happened? Reckon what happened? And how sad, you know, that it would uh, be to to get to that point where I have to put a church uh, up for sale." But uh, I'm also reminded: Have you ever seen the? Maybe a truck, you'll see it on equipment, not for hire. Or maybe even a truck says not for sale. But wouldn't it be good to have a, maybe put it on a church sign, not for sale. 
Amen. We need to we need to let the devil know our young people ain't for sale. Amen. Ain't for hire either. This church ain't for sale. Amen. We're the church. We ain't going down. We're not like the sinking Titanic. We're not going down. We're going up, ain't we? Amen. Not for sale. You just might need to tell the devil that this week. Hey, this house ain't not, not, it's not for sale. Amen. You ain't, uh, you might as well just go on. I'm not for sale. Amen. The devil would love nothing more to, 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 to wreck your home, your children, uh, this church, but we just need to let him know it ain't for sale. Not for sale. That's good, ain't it? I'm very, very thankful today of uh, uh, there's a song that uh, Wilma and uh, Miss Catherine sang. It's been on my mind all day, and I'm going to try to sing it. It kind of goes right along with, with the message tonight. <clears throat> what will I leave behind? After I leave for worlds unknown, over the borderline, Never again on earth to roam. What will I leave behind? Leave behind, yes, leave behind. What will I leave behind? After I leave for worlds unknown. What will I leave behind? Now listen to the words. Will I be missed by those I love? Or have I been unkind? Have I been true to God above? What will I leave behind? This is my prayer, O oh Lord, today. Let me be holy thine when I am called from earth away. Let heaven then be mine. Leave behind, yes, leave behind. What will I leave behind after I leave for worlds unknown? What will I leave behind? Very true song, eh? It makes you think, don't it? It sure does. Um, turn with us uh, tonight, and um, i got a couple places to go. Second uh, Kings thirteen. We're going to start right there. Second Kings thirteen. We good. All right. I was on, didn't know it. Second uh, Kings thirteen. And verse number 20. One verse here. And Elisha died, and they buried him. Well, actually two verses. And the bands of the Moabite invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying the man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word tonight. And I pray, God, the Lord, that you just uh, get us out of the way. and You know exactly what we need and what needs to be said and every word, Lord, that needs to be heard. And I pray, Lord, that you just take our lips of clay have your wee, wee, sweet wailing, wailing wheel, Lord, tonight, I pray. I pray, God, that you get me out of the way or move any, uh, Lord, any sin or doubt or any hindrance out of our life that would hinder your Holy Spirit. 
having his right away, Lord. Lord, and we pray, God, your will be done tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And to think about uh, this song, What Will I Leave Behind? And I got to thinking uh, about uh, a few weeks ago, my dad preached here uh, on a Sunday night uh, uh, about when Elisha desired the double portion of Elijah. Uh, there in 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 uh, Second Kings, first uh, the part of Second Kings, there in chapter number two, and uh, and so uh, Elisha desired a double portion of Elijah's spirit, and uh, you know the life of Elisha was he got what he asked for when uh, he was persistent and consisted in. In getting what he asked for, he, he, uh, he desired the double portion. And when Elijah died, he got that double portion. As soon as he saw him go up by a whirlwind and, and uh, the chariots of fire, and, and he picked up the, the mantle of Elijah and went down there on, uh, to Jordan River where they had just crossed over on dry ground. And he smote the water and he said, Where is the God of Elijah. The Bible says that the waters parted hither and thither, and, and the people that stood afar off said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And so you read the life of Elijah or Elisha, and Elisha did get what he asked for. And um, if you remember, my dad's message was the title of his message uh, uh, Do you have something that somebody could use? Remember that? Uh, uh, do you have some, somebody using? So Elisha desired to have uh, uh, what Elijah had because he knowed he could use that. He knowed that uh, he had to have the power of God in his life to be able to do what, to, what that God had called him to do. And he said, I want a double portion of what Elijah had because he had God on him and I want God on me. And, uh, and so... I, I taking that that message and taking that thought tonight of what do you what do you have to leave behind to the people around you? What do you have to leave behind to your church? What do you have to leave behind to your family and to your children? Now we think about leaving things behind, thinking, well, I want to leave my family a good inheritance. I want to leave them uh, something to make life a little easier on. I know it's all our. Uh, 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 heart's desire as parents to, to leave our children a little something or other to, uh, to really help them out in life and uh, maybe leave them a little money or leave them some land where they could uh, maybe build a house on or, or, or help them out and make life a little easier, no doubt. That's what all of us would want. Uh, but let me say the most valuable thing that you leave behind is your testimony in the Lord. Number one is leaving a testimony that you've been saved. I, 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 I can't tell you how many times that I've preached a funeral where, where the family is grabbing at straws because mama never said, daddy never said, and a, a family member never said, and they're wondering, they're thinking, I really don't know where they're at. That's an awful way to leave your family. And let me say, you owe it to your family you owe it to your family to leave them a, a, an assured testimony that, boy, I know where daddy's at. There's not a doubt in my mind where mama's at and daddy's at and sister's at and so on and so forth. Amen? That's something that, that you say, well, I ain't got a lot to give my family. I don't have money. don't have land. I, that don't matter. Really, be honest with you. Uh, the money you work hard for and the land that you've worked for and, 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 and paid for and uh, paid taxes on all your life, uh, somebody's just going to get it to either sell or fight over it. Right. Bottom line, ain't it? Or if you have to go to a nursing home, they'll take it one. That's just the way it is, ain't it? But the most important thing is what we leave behind in the Lord. It's the most value that you can give more than money. If you give money, it'll be spent sometime or another. Uh, one way or another, it'll be gone and it'll be, it'll be over with. But something that will stick is the testimony you leave of the Lord. 
and, 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 the, and the legacy you leave with the Lord. And I think about, you know, no doubt uh, in Elisha's ministry, he was, would probably think about things that Elijah would tell him. Things that he, that he saw and witnessed the power of God upon Elijah. Things that he saw him do. Things that he saw God move in a mighty and great way. You read the life of Elisha and he done similar miracles uh, as, as, as uh, uh, Elijah did, right? And God put him in similar situations, right? But God delivered and God... The same God that was with Elijah was the same God was with Elisha. And the power of God was upon him so much that even at, when he died, he was in his sepulcher. They, they, they was a, a man there that uh, uh, they were going to bury. And, and here come, the Bible says that uh, uh, they were burying a man and they spied a band of men and they cast a, a, the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. I just uh, stuck him in when they was laying him down there. I ain't lowered him down and he touched the bones of Elisha and him being dead now. They touched the bones of Elisha and that man come up and stood on his feet. Uh, now you think about it. He had so much power of God, even him dead and gone. Hey, he had something, some substance about him that was still living on. Amen. The power of God was on his life. And I was thinking tonight of, you know, of, of what we have to offer. When Peter, James, and John was going into the temple to pray, there laid a man down there at the gate called Beautiful, and he was asking alms. And he looked there, and, and Peter, James, and John, they, 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 they looked at him and said, Look on us. And he looked on them expecting to receive alms. Alms it could either be of money, could be food. It was alms was anything uh, 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 of compassion uh, to the poor. And and they they he was laying there thinking, well, are you going to give me something to eat? You're going to give me some money? Are you what what something of value? That's what he was expecting. Uh, but that day he got some of the uh, uh, something that was more valuable than he had ever received, uh, and that was uh, uh, the, the the gift of God. Amen. And so he said, "Look on us, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee." You know what Peter was saying? I ain't got what you want, but I've got what you need, amen. Uh, this world might, might, might look at you expecting uh, you to give them some money, uh, but the best thing you've got to offer them is the power of God on your life, the Spirit of God. And they'll want what you've got after a while. Amen. amen. They'll want what you've got. I remember a few years ago, revival up there at Higgins Chapel. And at the end of that revival on Sunday morning, there's a man got saved. And he said this, I thought all week I want what them people's got. Amen. Uh, they had something about them that he wanted. He knew he didn't have. Amen. He knew that uh, what they had in the Lord was more valuable than what this old world has to offer. Amen. There's people in this world looking for a good time. And they think they can find a good time. At a party where they're drinking, where they're doing drugs, they think that's the good time. But after a while, they realize there's pleasure in that for a season, and then that season runs out. And there ain't no fun in it after the season's gone, after the fun's gone. There's consequences of that stuff. Uh, these commercials, the beer commercial, liquor commercials, they want to show you people having a good time and a party, uh, but they don't want to show you uh, uh, broken marriages and broken homes, children going to foster uh, 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 foster homes and, and children home because of mom and daddy's addiction on drugs and on alcohol. They don't want to show you that side of it. Amen. But I'm here to tell you there's something else a whole lot better than that. And that's hooking up with Jesus. Amen. That's a high, the friend, that when, uh, when, 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 you, uh, 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 when you experience the Spirit and the power of God in your life, uh, you can remember it tomorrow. 
Amen. And you can feed on off of it. And it'll get you through the toughest times of your life uh, when nothing else will. And when pills and, and whatever you're trying to get you through, when it don't work, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, feed off the, the Spirit and the power of God. I think about what he told the woman at the well. He said, this water that you're drinking of, uh, you're going to thirst again. Amen. Whatever well you're drinking out of today, if it ain't working for you, I'd switch wells. Amen. Uh, the well of Jesus Christ. He said, the water that I shall give you, it'll be inside of you a well springing up into everlasting life. I was thinking about that well the other day. How many times in our Christian life we've had to go to that wayside well uh, when nobody else was around. We took a drink of that wayside well we felt like we was about to uh, uh, drown we felt like we was just about to crumble uh, but somewhere along last way God just began to uh, God give us a uh, pick me up amen. amen ain't you glad of the way son? a well springing up into everlasting life amen. Amen. amen you can have as much of God as you want to you got all of him when you got saved my brother mentioned that at the youth camp a long time ago, and I've never forgotten it. We got all of him when we got saved. You hear people say, Lord, I want more of you. You got all of him, but it's how much of you you're giving him. That's the deal right there. How much are you are you giving him? And we give up and let Jesus take over. I like that song. Give up and let Jesus take over, and he'll make a way for you. Now we think, Think about what do we have to offer? Peter, he said, look on us. Silver and gold have an but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Take thy bed and rise and walk. And he did. He didn't just walk, he leaped into the temple praising God. Read on where they questioned him, right? But listen, you, you think about... Uh, what do you have to offer? I mentioned this morning your testimony. Enoch had a testimony that he walked with God. You know, that he pleased God. He had this testimony that he pleased God. He walked with God. And therefore, he was known for a man that pleased God. Greatest thing to be ever said about any of us. Is not how well known you are, how famous you are, how wealthy you are, how smart you are, how knowledgeable you are. But the greatest thing that ever be said was that person fought with God. Man, that, that, that man or that woman was faithful to God. They please the Lord. Or I feel God on that person. I, I, I remember uh, there was a lady come here several years ago and, and uh, she, she spoke about a preacher, uh, Eddie McCamus. He's been here before and preached revival for us a long time ago. And uh, she said, do you know preacher Eddie McCamus I said I sure do she said he's the real deal he's the real deal what something good to say about somebody he's the real deal there's nothing fake about him now listen friend you're not fooling God you might be fooling people but be the real deal be genuine be the real deal don't be fake people picks up on fake Spirit of God won't honor fake either. Amen. The Spirit of God will tell on you, won't he? He will tell on you. But if you be the real deal, be genuine, somebody, somebody will want to have what you've got. You have something to leave behind. You have something somebody could use, as Daddy's message was. You have something that somebody can... Can use now. I thought of this over there in uh, 
over there in 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 15. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts. Set apart. Set the Lord apart in your heart. And be ye ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with, with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. What kind of conversation do you carry? Is it vain talk? Is it vanity talk? Is it filthy talk? Or do you have something to say to somebody? Do you have some salt about you that somebody can be affected by what you're saying? Can you talk to a lost person and then when they leave you, you, you know that there's, a, there's something different, some tip, different about that person. You don't necessarily have to witness to somebody every time you see them to be effective. Well, J.P. mentioned this morning about Brother David. His son there met him at the, at the gym and, and uh, nev- didn't necessarily uh, mention church or, or God or anything, but he noticed something different about him. He even said, he was good. He was good. See, when the Spirit of God is upon your life, people will know it. You know why? Because the Spirit of God is a light. We are a light. And this world, in this world is darkness. A light will pick up. You can notice a light. Over the years, they've improved lighting. They're calling it LED lighting. It's bright. You can tell the difference when somebody's got regular headlights and then they've got LED lights, right? When there's the light of Jesus Christ in somebody's life, you don't have to wear a T-shirt. Don't get me wrong. T-shirt and hats that's, that's Christian base is, is wonderful. Wearing your church shirts is wonderful. But if you've got to wear that to prove you're a Christian, you're missing the mark. Man, your life is approving your walk. Talk is cheap. But if you don't live it, if you don't walk the walk, you can talk it all day. People, people know you. And the people who knows you the best is the people you work with, the people you live with. They know the true you. And what you've got to offer, you know, it says here, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I've heard people, man, has asked me more than once. He said, you believe, preacher, we're living in the last day? And I said, I believe it just as short as I'm standing here. We could be the generation to see the Lord come back. People need to get ready, don't they? I said, yes, sir. See, the Lord was dealing with him. and He just, that was just his way of talking about it, right? And been saved, but just out of fellowship with God, knows what he needs to do, you know. And, and, uh, and you've heard me preach before. I, I believe... If you're truly saved, you, you'll be chastened. And, and the Lord's chastening him, and I want you to pray for him. He's a good man. It just, just needs to just get, get things back where they need to be. Haven't been church in years and knows the Bible, quotes the Bible, but just not living where he ought to be. He's, uh, he's, he's like that prodigal needs to come home. Amen? But, but people of that walk they they uh, they know the difference right they know and they know the people that that lives it in front of them. and what saddens me the most is lost people will look at a christian a so-called christian and say well if that's a christian i don't want nothing of it now that's brant barren of reproach upon not only you your home But the church you go to reflects on your church, reflects on your pastor, 
And most importantly, it brings a reproach on God Almighty, don't it? But instead of bringing reproach, why not lift up the name of Jesus and go in the name of Jesus Christ? And people will see a difference in your life and they'll want what you've got. They'll know, they know different. They know the real thing. They might not, they might not maybe understand you and how you live and what you believe in and your walk with God, but they'll know it's different and they'll want it. They'll want it. As Peter and John said, silver and gold have enough, but such as I have, give I thee. Now let me say this. There's a lot of folks out there. They're looking for peace, but in the wrong places. But when they, they see God on your life, they're seeing what they need and what they want. Amen? If they can't see something and desire what you have, mine and your life, and let me say, there's times in our life that we get within ourselves. We've got the wrong attitude. All we're doing is murmuring and complaining. And they don't see anything in their life that they want. And I know we all have bad days and things, and we get things out of perspective at times because we're in this old flesh, but I'm not condoning that. But hey, we need to come to our senses and say, hey, I need to be careful what I say. and Be careful what, the way I go about things, right? Because I'm being watched. People's watching your life. These youngins is watching our life. Have you ever noticed this? The way you think about somebody is the way your children will think about them. You talk about somebody in front of your children, they'll think that about your children, about them. And they'll get that, that mind frame about them, right? You talk about the preacher, they'll think the same way about the preacher. You talk about the Leaders of the church, you talk about your brother and sister in Christ, your children will feel the same way and don't even understand, don't even know the situation. Nine times out of ten, sometimes when we're talking, we don't even understand what, we don't even know what we're talking about. I love the, love the bumper sticker I saw years ago. Never have an opinion about something you don't understand. Never have an opinion about something you don't understand. If the world took that to heart, there wouldn't be no gossiping. They, they wouldn't be, they'd, they'd be, uh, well, if, and here's the thing, that goes with everything in life. Christianity and everything. Politics, if people just would pray instead of talking about stuff, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Right? We need to pray more. We need to, somebody ask you, say, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think we ought to do about this? What do you think about the remedy about this? I believe a lot of the answers to a lot of it would be, why don't we just pray about it? Why don't we seek God's face about it? I, I've, I've heard, I remember a, a story years ago about a young man when he went into the military, his mother told him, said, I want you to know that, that every, every morning about 9.30, I'm going to be behind the wood stove praying for you. And he remembered that. And they were in battle, and I hope I'm telling this correctly, but, but uh, they, they, they had where they were camped out, they had an American flag and, uh, and had it on a, a flagpole. And, and they, uh, they was uh, being fired at. Every time they'd go out and try to hang that American flag, they were being shot at. And... Uh, that uh, young man remembered his mother praying for him every morning at 9.30. He said, he said uh, went to uh, the man in charge there, the captain, said, I'll, uh, I'll hang that flag in the morning at 9.30. He 
He said, why 9.30? We, we, we like to hang it, you know, daylight or a certain time. And he said, uh, well, the reason why at 9.30 is my mama be up behind the wood stove praying for me. And I know that uh, she can get a prayer through. And I, I've got confidence in my mama. And I know that she's hooked up with God. And uh, I, I'm, I'm confident I can hang that flag if you'll, uh, if you'll wait till 9.30. It didn't make a lot of sense to that man, but he said, okay, I'd be all right. Boy went out there and took that American flag, done like he always did. He put that flag up on that rope, and he shimmed her up there, and bullets going all the way around him. Never was hit. He come back in, looked at the captain and sergeant there, and said to I told you, I've got a mama, a godly mama, that's back home right now behind that old wood stove praying for me. Amen. Amen. He had confidence. He had confidence in his mama. Now I wonder how many of you veterans in here tonight that you know your mama and your daddy was a praying for you, you over there in harm's way. And it come to your mind, I've got a mom and, and a daddy. Might not be behind the wood stove, but there's about there behind the wood shed or in the laurel thicket, a praying for me. And you know you're just going to get home safely because mom and daddy was a praying for you. And you know that God was a watching over you. Amen. But how many times have we thought of this? What your mom and daddy has, has lived the life in front of you I've thought of this. I've, I've got a great heritage. I've got a wonderful heritage. Grandmas and grandpas and, and mom and daddy, godly, that, 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 that loved the Lord and lived the life in front of me, I want to hand it to my youngins. I want to live the life. I want to live the life in front of my children that they can have something to raise their children by. I'm raising my youngins the way my mom and daddy raised me. So I want to, to raise my youngins in a godly way. And let me say this about raising youngins, the hardest thing i ever done. But the biggest thing, the worst thing you can do is not admit your wrong to your youngins. And that's the hardest thing to do, sometimes swallow your pride. But I've let my youngins know that he ain't perfect. Daddy don't always do the right things. And Daddy don't always say the right thing or maybe give you the right advice. But I want you to know that Daddy loves Jesus. And Daddy's a trying his best to raise you up in the admonition of the Lord and raise you the right way that one day when you have youngins, you'll know how to raise your youngins right. Man, I've had that talk with my youngins. And my youngins will tell you, oh, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy gets a temper every now and again. But Daddy says he's sorry, right? And, 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 and Daddy loves the Lord. And, and I, 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 want, I want to leave something behind. Maybe something I've said through the leadership of God. That's the only way we can be effective is through the leadership of God. I want to give godly advice, right? I, I, you, you know people you got confidence in. You go to, you know they're godly and you know they've got wisdom about them. We need to have that. That, that. that generation's a dying breed. We need to pick up where they have left off and went on to be with the Lord. But they have given us sound advice and sound wisdom. We need to carry that on. Right? I mean, we can say, what's the matter with the church world? How about you? We can talk about everybody else. How about look at us? We well, say, well, the church is awful quiet. How long has it been since you shouted? How long has it been since you uh, uh, rooted and cheered for the preacher and said amen? Amen? How many, how, how, we say, well, how the church, uh, um, they don't, uh, don't do like they used to. Don't go around the altar much. How, how much have you went to the altar lately? Amen? We can talk about everybody else, but hey, how about us? It begins with us. Revival begins with us. Amen? And so, uh, what, 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 what do we got to offer tonight? And what do we got to leave behind? Something to leave behind. And 
I've, uh, I've thought countless times of, of preachers. It's been a, a big help to me. And this morning, uh, I, was, I was in betwixt about three or four different ways I could have preached this morning and messages, and I was torn. And I remember uh, Leonard Sheehan told me when I first started preaching, Preacher Leonard Sheehan came up to me and he said, I want to give you some advice how to study. And I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, read for about 30 minutes and get down and pray for about an hour. Get back up and read for 30 more minutes and pray for an hour. He said, what am I getting at, son? You'll get your messages on your knees. He said, there's a whole lot of sermons out there, no doubt you can pick up. But he said the message comes from God. And you'll get what God intends you to, to give that day or that for that hour on your knees. And I was struggling this morning. And that's been over. That's been right at, uh, let's see here now, I've been preaching for 22 years. And that's been been 22 years and this morning I was struggling I was, I was struggling because I'm very careful I'm very careful because not just any message might be the message for the hour because God knows everybody that's going to be here knows the needs and I take that very seriously but I remembered what that man gave to me that day he gave me some advice that 22 years later I'm still using that's valuable to me that was vice that, and you know what I did I got down on my knees and I said Lord you direct me the very scripture the very words that I need and I'll be honest with you I had to stay there a while but God give me just, just a deep, settled peace about the scripture I need to read this morning. And I got up and I got to thinking about that preacher, what he said to me. He might have forgot about it, but I sure didn't. Get your message on your knees. Man, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of questions in life. You might not be a preacher. Let me tell you this, you'll get your answers on your knees. You might be searching on Google, YouTube, trying to get an answer, figure out something in your life. But you'll get your answer on your knees. You might be searching your life, searching through life for answers and, and trying to figure out, trying, trying to make things work when it ain't working. But you'll get your answers on your knees. Young people, a lot of you in high school and college, and there's a lot of decisions, and, and, and it's scary to figure out what you're going to do in life and what your purpose is in life. You'll get your answers on your knees. Where you need to go to college, if you need to go to college, uh, what you need to do in life, what your, person, what, what your occupation needs to be. I mean, that's a struggle. That's, that's hard to do, ain't it? But you'll get your answers on your knees. Man, pray about it. Who you date, pray about it. It has everything to do. You say, well, I, I, uh, you know, I've heard people say, I'm just playing the field. You can get burnt playing the field. You need, to, you need to pray who God would have you to be with. and Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The Bible tells us to do. Don't, don't be unequally yoked. You may think you can change them. It might be vice versa. It might change you. But pray. and Seek God's face and seek God's help. and Be what God would have you to be. And Somebody will want to... Somebody will look at your life and they'll, they'll want to be like you. 
Won't that, ain't that good? Somebody say, I, I won't be like that person. I want what they got. I want what they got. Not that we're anything. We're nothing but sin or saved by the grace of God. But anything that in us is worth anything is, is what we have in the Lord. Amen. Fred Davis was a was a deacon here, wasn't he? A deacon. I never met the man. He, his wife was still alive, Ruby, when I came to Southside. But Fred was 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 already passed on. And uh, he has a there's a story about him that the deacons was out visiting one day. If I'm telling this right, Clyde was with him, Bradford was with him, and there's a man talked pretty bad to him. Maybe you can cuss him out. And uh, Fred had a little smirk on his. He kind of grinned like this, you know. He just grinned at him and turned around, got in the car, and they left. They said, Fred, why didn't you say something to him? Why didn't you stand your ground with him? He said, well, everybody has a bad day every now and again. Meek. Spirit of meekness and temperance. I desire to have that, right? I desire to have that. You know, we, we think about, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm just going to tell that person like it is. Hmm. They done me wrong, maybe they're going to get it. I'm going to get back at them. Well, first of all, the Bible says, Vengeance is mine. I will repay thus saith the Lord. And after you get rid of, uh, get done telling them what you think of them, are you going to invite them to church and tell them where you go to church at? Think of that. After you're ready to knock their head off and do whatever you, your flesh wants to do, uh, make sure you invite them to church and tell them where you go to church at. You see my point? Moreover, a lot of people already know, don't they, where you go to church and so think, think before you act. Man, that's the message tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight, and we thank you, God, for the instruction, God, you've given us. And help us, I pray, to live the life, Lord, that, Lord, one day that somebody will want what we've got, and we'll, somebody can use what we've got, and they, they, can, they can be effective. Lord, by being affected by our life. And God, I thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Every